Hey everybody, Logan here, back with another episode of Bottoms Up Development with Llama Index. Today we're going to be covering uh, customizing retrievers and node post processors in Llama Index. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's quickly review what a query engine looks like in Llama Index. So when you create a query engine, typically you're creating it on top of your index, uh, and you'll send it like a query string and you'll get back a response. Uh, but under the hood, there's several steps that are taking place to make this happen. So from your query string, Llama Index retrieves relevant nodes, uh, optionally post-processes them uh, with some kind of transformation if you've uh, passed in a node post-processor. And then we take those list of nodes and send it to a response synthesizer, which is basically sending those nodes to an LLM like OpenAI to synthesize that natural language response. And then finally, you get your response object at the end. So in this video, we're going to be covering customizing specifically the retrieval and the post-processing steps in a query engine. So looking at retrievers in Llama index, uh, every index has its own retriever that you can access with as retriever. Uh, on top of that, we have a bunch of specialized retrievers uh, for various purposes, a recursive retriever, auto merging retriever, and more. And each of these retrievers is super simple. Um, once you create it, you just have to call retrieve, pass it a string, and it will give you the nodes that are basically relevant to that string depending on the index. Um, so here we have a really simple example of using a vector index with two documents in it. We create the retriever with a top K of one, we query for a cat, and indeed we do get back a cat. Now on top of this, we can also post-process these retrieved nodes. Uh, we have a lot of post-processors that are baked into Llama index that you can use right now. On top of that, it's also really easy to add your own node post-processors since you only have to implement uh, a single method. And later on in this tutorial, we'll go through uh, creating your own node post-processor. So down here, we could see a quick example of using one uh, at a low level. So you could create like a re-ranker here, which is going to reorder our nodes. Uh, we create our retriever again, but this time we set the top K to two. We call retrieve, and then we also call post-process. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take our nodes, post-process them according to this re-ranker. Uh, what this re-ranker is going to do is reorder the nodes and return the top one. So in this case, we're going to reorder according to our query, which is a black cat. And indeed, we do get back the node that says a cat. And that's basically it for retrievers and node post-processors. We can kind of jump right into our example notebook here. So in this notebook, we're going to be covering a auto-merging retriever, as well as implementing our own custom node post-processor. Uh, at the top of the notebook here is just some setup to set up our LLMs and our OpenAI keys. Um, we're going to be using a local embedding model just to save myself the tokens as I'm running this. So first step uh, is loading our documents. And specifically, we want to load our documents in order to use them with the auto-merging retriever. Now, the auto-merging retriever depends on this thing called a hierarchical node parser. What this means is that it parses your nodes into a hierarchy where we have a top level chunk size, and then we have children chunks that are smaller. So in this case, we have a top level chunk size of 1536, and then each top level chunk will have three children uh, of a size that are one third that. And what this means is that when we call the retriever later on, if two out of the three children are retrieved, we replace it with the parent chunk, because clearly it's relevant enough that we should just include the entire parent context. In order to do this, we use our markdown loader from previous uh, episodes here, we combine our documents into one kind of mega document to help this parsing work better. Uh, we set up the hierarchical node parse parser and we return our nodes. At the bottom here, you'll see we're also returning our leaf nodes. Uh, what this means is nodes that uh, don't have any children, essentially. And you'll see later on how we use those. So now that we've loaded our nodes or created the function to load our nodes, we can also set up our function to load our query engines. If you remember, we're creating a kind of chat LLM application over top of the LUM index documentation. Um, so we have several query engines for different sections of the documentation. So here I've set up a function that will take a directory, a description of that directory, and possibly any post processors to basically construct each index or query engine for each directory. So it does a little bit of checking here to see if it's already been created and saved to disk. 
Uh, if it's not been saved to disk, uh, we call our function from above to load the markdown documentation. We add the documents to a doc store. Um, and then we also construct the index using just the leaf nodes. Now, what this means here is that the index is only going to retrieve leaf nodes, but then later on, this auto merging retriever is going to check if we've retrieved enough children of a kind of hierarchical parent that we have to merge and replace with that parent. Uh, in order for this to work well, you have to set the top K a little high. Um, you'll see here we're setting the top K to 12. Now I've also included some code in here to also uh, load a normal index without the hierarchical node parsing or without the auto merging retrieval. So in this next section here, I'm going to compare uh, two retrieval techniques. So the first one using our hierarchical retriever and the second one without, um, we're going to be retrieving based on the documentation that talks about how to query things, essentially. So here I'm going to build my first query engine. I'm going to remove the save indexes just to avoid any conflicts between uh, saving and loading here. And then lastly, I'm going to call retrieve with these query engines uh, with the same query string, which is how do I set up a query engine? Uh, pretty basic. Then the next step here is I'm going to print out the text that was actually received from these nodes. And you'll see that it's actually a lot of text that's being retrieved because we had to set the top K a little bit high in order for the hierarchical retriever to work well. So here at the end, I print also the total length of the text received. And so here the hierarchical retriever retrieves a lot of text uh, that can help us answer that question. Uh, but the total length is 6,000 tokens, which is going to involve several LLM calls if we actually use these nodes. Whereas the base retriever uh, also retrieves a lot of text, um, but quite a bit shorter this time, only 1,400. And this is because the kind of hierarchical retriever is, you know, retrieving all these children nodes. It might be merging up to parent nodes, um, and there's a lot of text involved in this process. Now, a problem here, like I mentioned, is that the hierarchical retriever might involve more LLM calls at the query time in order to get the LLM to read all those nodes that it retrieved and all that text. As we saw above, it was almost 7,000 tokens, whereas the base retriever is only retrieving about 1,400 tokens. So in this section here, we basically develop a solution to our token problem uh, where we still want to use the hierarchical retriever, but we also want to limit how much tokens are actually being used to synthesize the response. So for this, we can implement a custom node post processor that essentially uses a tokenizer. In this case, it's using the default tick token tokenizer in LOM index, uh, but you could pass in whatever you wanted. Um, it counts the tokens in every node that was returned by the retriever and returns the subset of nodes that don't go over the limit that we set. So in this case, the default limit is 3,000 tokens. We count the nodes and we stop adding nodes once we reach or exceed that limit. So we can create our query engine again, and this time pass in our post processors here, uh, which is our just single uh, limit the length post processor. We send our query again, and this time we will see that the actual retrieved length of nodes is indeed shorter than 3,000. So now we have 2,300 tokens returned, uh, which will help our queries speed up quite a bit while still keeping the most relevant text. Uh, and we know it's the most relevant text because the nodes in the post processor are ordered by similarity. So we've kept the most similar ones and cut it off uh, at a certain token length. Lastly, we can set up our final query engine. Uh, so like I said before, we're setting up a sort of query engine tool for each uh, sub index. So we have stuff about the community, stuff about agents, uh, stuff about getting started. We can load all of these and load them into query engine tools, passing along our post processor. And then we can build a router query engine on top. I think in a previous episode, I was using a sub question query engine. I found it quite a bit slower than what I wanted. Uh, and I found this router query engine to be quite a bit faster and it almost felt more accurate. Um, the dif difference here being is that the router query engine is not rewriting your query, it's just copying your query and sending it to the indexes it thinks are most relevant. Since I have select multi equals true, it could send it to any number of sub indexes. Then the responses from those indexes are aggregated. 
So we're going to set that up. It's going to take a second because I am setting up a lot of indexes uh, and building them on my local machine. So we'll give that a second. Okay, so the query engine is now set up. It's ready to go. We can test a few queries. Uh, so I have kind of like three queries here that I wanted to try out. Uh, one, how do I set up a Chroma DB vector store? And I also asked it to give me a code sample. Uh, let's see if it can manage to answer that question. The second question here is how can I customize document objects? And the last question is how can I customize document metadata? So here we get our first response. Um, indeed, this is how you set up the Chroma vector store. Uh, so that's perfect. Um, it obviously retrieved the relevant parts of the documentation uh, and relayed that to me appropriately. Our second question here, how can I customize document objects? It uh, gives us a bit of a spiel about customizing the metadata attribute. Uh, we have things like excluded embed keys, metadata template. Uh, this is all correct. Uh, and then lastly, how can I customize document metadata specifically, not just the document object? Uh, it gives us a bit more detailed explanation that is actually quite helpful. It mentions both the excluded LM metadata keys, excluded embed keys, uh, all these fancy attributes here that are very helpful for customizing documents and their metadata. And yeah, great response. And so, yeah, that's basically it. We've covered setting up a custom retriever, so specifically the auto merging retriever, which uses the hierarchical node parser. We've covered implementing a custom node post processor and also reviewed how to set up a router query engine. Uh, if you visit the repository for this video, you'll find the full code is available in the Llama docs bot folder, as well as uh, the code for this specific notebook. Uh, in this folder, I've cleaned it up a bit, made it easier to read uh, and understand. And yeah, that's everything. Thank you and see you next time.